I really hope you enjoyed the new intro because I fucking love it. I absolutely love it. I think it's amazing. And I spent about an hour rendering that eight second little tiny clip out. And you know what? I, I wish you could see the look on my face because uh, I, I just love it. I think it's, all, it's, it's awesome. Anyway, we'll leave it at that. That's it. Get rid of that news. So, news of the week for Battlefield 4. Uh, first up is bad news for you Xbox players. Really bad news. Or at least Xbox 360 players. Um, Battlefield 4, when it launches, you're going to need to do a 2 gigabyte mandatory install anyway. So that's it for that. And if you want an optimal game, you know, a good looking game out of what you've got, the multiplayer disc is going to have 6.6 .6 gigabytes of uh, content, and the single player disc is going to have 5.8, which brings your grand total up to about 14.4 gigabytes for the best performance. Now, if you're not getting an Xbox One for Christmas, uh, wipe some of that shit off your Xbox if you want if you want to, if you play Battlefield 4 on Xbox. I know there's not a lot of uh, people out there, um, but you know, it's one of those things that it's it's just one of those things. You're gonna have to do it, unless you want to upgrade to the Xbox One, which uh, I think has a Blu-ray player. So you're probably gonna have to only install like two gigs or something like that because the Blu-ray disc can play a lot faster and it has a lot more space on it. Uh, so that's that for you, Xbox guys. Uh, no news about the PlayStation 3 yet. Um, nothing's been confirmed. So uh, maybe still you've got some. You know, there's probably going to be a big install for that as well, but that's all that's out for that. Um, Dice have listened, guys. Dice have listened. That's what they're saying, at least. Uh, to the beta. To your issues and things like this. Uh, there's a couple of bullet points here that I'm looking at. And it says... Well, the first one, I'll read this off like this. Uh, because it's going to sound a bit like gibberish. And I'll try and make sense of it. <coughs> Right, here we go. Uh, fixed how the player only receives a single local damage sound effect if he or she was the victim of a quick, clean kill. The sound and camera impact effect had too long a cooldown between hits. This should improve the responsiveness of being killed and taking damage. Maybe you guys understood that. Basically, I think what this is, is it's... Well, it is what it is, but it also isn't what it is, because what I think it is, is when you get hit from the front and you get a hit marker that says you've just got hit from behind and you turn around, which is what happened to me, and I look like a fucking idiot because of dice. Again. Um, I think that's what it is. You know, you, you get shot from the front or you get shot from the left and then the hit marker on your screen appears on the right. And you turn to that way because you think you're getting shot from that direction, but you're actually not. Uh, I think that that's kind of the big issue with that. Uh, the AK-12 is next up on this news, and I'm not really happy about this, guys, to be honest. Not really happy at all. It says, reduce the fire rate of the AK-12 and burst from 1000 RPM to 750 RPM. The rate of fire was too high when combined with the low recoil of this weapon, making it more powerful than intended in burst mode. Now, I don't know about you guys, but why give a weapon a burst mode if people aren't going to use it? Because everybody knows that tap firing is better than burst mode. Uh, so why not, you know, give burst mode a little bit more of a advantage? Because otherwise nobody's going to use it, right? Uh, that's that's my opinion on it anyway. So for the next one, we've got increased the muzzle flash of the 25 millimeter and 40. 40mm launches to make their threat position more visible. Uh, yeah, never really had any problem with that in the beta. Obviously a lot of people did, otherwise we wouldn't have patched it. Uh, next up is a biggie. Uh, the revive time has been increased from 7 seconds to 10 seconds. Um, not sure if that's going to do much, but obviously it's been patched. People have been saying things about it, so it's been patched. Um, yeah, that's really the main news. On to a couple of side notes. Uh, Astro has announced, well, I think I think they brought it out today anyway, but Astro announced that uh, the Battlefield 4 A50 wireless headset will be coming out. Uh, I'm not sure on a price tag, to be honest with you, um, but it's exactly the same as the A50 wireless headset. It's just a Battlefield 4 branded 
headset with some cool look on it, I guess. Uh, maybe some artwork. Uh, Razor's also done this, but they've done it before them. And they brought out, I think, the, the Black Widow Ultimate. Maybe just the Black Widow uh, 2013 edition. With some cool sticker stuff on it. And also a headset and some other cool stuff. So if you want some Battlefield 4 branded crap for your computer desk, maybe head over there now and purchase it. And some other things to do with AMD, uh, which uh, a lot of people might know this, a lot of you might not. That's why I'm just putting it in here. Uh, but AMD paid $8 million for the AM for the Battlefield 4 uh, exclusivity rights, which means that it was made on the AMD graphics cards and it's optimized for AMD. Um, a lot of you might not know this, but uh, Battlefield 4 is going to be uh, really CPU intensive. I know it was in the beta, it took about 100% of most of your uh, you know, processors up. I took that on mine, because mine's an i5, and apparently it's supposed to spread out uh, the uh, intensive usage between all of the cores, and everyone knows that i5s uh, generally are 4 core processors. Uh, those of you with i7s, you've got 8 cores. Um, AMD actually make 8 core processors and they make them cheaper than Intel, which means that AMD have been sort of slippily making their way into the uh, the whole sort of like, you know, let's buy these exclusivity rights right now and we'll try and sell uh, Battlefield 4 as an AMD game. Uh, you're going to get probably about, everybody's thinking about 10, 10 frames more if you get an AMD card compared to an NVIDIA card. Um, I'm kind of... I'm un I am kind of biased because I do have an AMD card, but I used to have a, a GTX 480. I know that's not a very good graphics card from NVIDIA, but that's the card I used to have. And uh, I find that you kind of get more value for money when you go with AMD, but uh, that's just my opinion on it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed some of that news. Uh, if you didn't, you know, already know about most of that stuff, um, uh, you know, you're welcome. <laughs> nah, not really. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you soon. Bye.